Now let's look at spheres. Let's look at the electric field of a sphere. And now I'm going to get very specific, a sphere covered with charge on its surface. All right, covered with charge on its surface. And to also get specific, we have to distinguish sort of between insulators and conductors here. You could get away with not doing it for now, but I want you to know everything. I don't want to give you a little extra information. So we have an insulator, charge on its surface, and we have a conductor with charge on its surface. Okay. So let me draw them here. So we insulator, and we can say the charge is positive. It doesn't really matter. Let's make the charge positive. Now, I'm doing something we have to do a lot in physics, is I'm representing a three-dimensional object in two dimensions. This is a sphere with charge just on its surface. So this is kind of like a cross-section. In reality, the charge is all over the surface, if we're really looking at a sphere. But if I drew it that way, it would look like I have the charge inside the sphere, which would be a very different problem. So here we just mean on the surface. The conductor, if I draw it, would look exactly the same. Okay. Now, what we want to do is think about the electric field around the sphere. So you have here, and you might go out to a point, and what's the E field at this point? And we're going to say it depends on R, where R goes to the center of the sphere. And we're going to do the same thing for the metal. Here we are at the center, we go to some point, and R is the distance from the center of the sphere, not from the surface of the sphere. Okay. So let's see what rules we can come up with um, that apply. Let's see. Here, I'll do, we'll have little star rules here. Let's say outside the spherical charge distributions, because you can see in both cases, the charge is evenly, uniformly making a sphere. Here it's a spherical shell. Here, the same thing. It's a spherical shell of charge because it only exists on the surface. You can think of it as a thin shell of charge. So outside a spherical charge distribution, either one in this case, the E field is equal to Ke Q, where Q is the total charge, with charge Q, um, Ke Q over R squared. Oops, that's R2, R squared. So it's like a point charge. It's like the field that we get by considering Coulomb's law, the force from Coulomb's law. That's why all this time I've been drawing a big charge with a big Q in it and writing Coulomb's law for a point charge. Because as long as you're outside the sphere, you get the same thing. Okay? And it's really not the fact that the object is a sphere, it's the fact that the charge distribution is spherical. If you had an insulating sphere and you charged half of it like this, and not that half, it wouldn't act like a point charge at the center. It would act like something else. But if it's a spherically symmetric charge distribution, as long as you're outside, it acts like all that Q is sitting right there. Okay? The insulator, we gave it a spherically symmetric charge distribution. Acts that way. The metal, also a spherically symmetric charge distribution. Acts the same way. Okay? That's if you're outside. Let's see. Now, let's do another rule here. Um, Inside the uh, um, spherical shell of charge, All right, so if we were to go inside, E equals zero. There is no electric field. If you go inside this thing, you could say, but there should be an electric field. Well, if we go here, the uh, positive charges give you an electric field this way, and these positive charges give you an electric field this way. And you might say, well, why do they cancel? Well, there's, these are closer, but there's more of these pushing that way. And if you do the math, they cancel. So the E field inside this shell is zero, and therefore the E field inside this shell is also zero. Right? Both are true.
What really though becomes, then the question you could ask is why did I specify the difference between the insulator and the conductor? What's the difference? Here's the difference. This is inside the spherical shell of charge E equals zero. Inside a conductor E equals zero always. Okay? It doesn't have to be spherically symmetric. It doesn't have to be charged. It doesn't have to be positively charged. It doesn't have to be negatively charged. It can be anything. The electric field of a static field inside a metal or a conductor is always zero. And the reason is kind of interesting. It's because the charges are free to move. Okay? So if an electric field built up inside this conductor, well, there is a free charge there, and it would be forced, and it would move. And if the field is still there, more and more would move, and they would move in a way that would reduce the field until they move and reduce it to zero. So here we had to rub charge onto the surface of the insulator to make sure it stayed on the surface. The conductor, we could put it on any way we want. We could throw it in the middle, we could rub it on, we could hook up a wire to it. Whatever you want to do, that charge will instantly go to the surface because the charge is trying to get as far away from itself as it can. And it leaves the electric field zero. Even if this thing were a square, if we had a cube of charge, we, or we had a, a, a cubical conductor, a, a conducting cube, and we threw charge on it, it would distribute itself in just the perfect way, just the perfect orientation with extra charge at the corners to make the electric field zero inside. Okay? Always true because of the unique properties of the conductor. Insulator only true if you have a shell. We could go on to more complicated physics. If you study more physics, you may someday learn what the electric field does if you have a completely charged insulator. If it's not just on the surface, but it's all the way inside, then you go further with this shell theorem idea we're talking about.